the double part. So Doug's right. For the first time, we have an option. And here's the option. One is that we leave this as a single S and we split this double. Or at that point, I could have made this one double and left that one single. And I could go down from here in both of these, and I will succeed just as well. But when I'm all done, and I get nothing but terminal symbols left, I will have two completely different trees that generate this string. Everyone see that? This is a bad thing. It's bad, <laughs> bad. It's bad to have to not know which tree to use. When you write a compiler, you don't want to have this choice because you have no idea how to parse this string. You can say yes, that it's a legitimate string, but you don't know which tree to use to generate it. And you're thinking, well, so what? Who, who cares what the tree looks like? It turns out that the tree often gives you a semantic interpretation of the meaning of the string, especially in a programming language. And the next example I'll do will show that. So if you're thinking, I don't get that, I'd like to see that, you will in a minute. Here, it's just the balance parentheses. There's no difference if you do it this way or this way. But the next example, there'll be a big difference in interpretation of the string if you have one tree that accepts it or a different tree that accepts it. This is called a parse tree. It represents a derivation of a particular string. A leftmost sequence like this is equivalent to a parse tree. A rightmost sequence is equivalent to a parse tree. Two different parse trees for any string in the language means that that language, or the grammar, I should say, not the language, the grammar that generates that language is ambiguous. We say a grammar is ambiguous if any string in the language has two or more parse trees. The grammar is unambiguous only if every single string that's in the language has a unique parse tree or a unique leftmost derivation. That means you can uniquely figure out how to parse it and come up with a single tree that parses it. Let me stop. I just said a lot of important things, so, so let me make sure I can clarify any questions before we move on. Are there any questions about everything so far? Ambiguity, parse trees, derivations, what we're doing here. I'd like to finish this example and maybe that will spur a couple more questions. But before, any questions to start? If yeah, Todd. considered ambiguous, one could have introduced that empty symbols, sprinkling them throughout. Every S could go to SS, where one has goes to That's three. definitely not, because it doesn't change the way the tree looks. That's right, right. So Todd's question, you know, when you decide to throw the, the empty strings in, that doesn't matter. Unless one S you becomes. Could, you, could, you could split your S into SS and then have the second S become an E just arbitrarily. <laughs> And that would just add a... Uh, that's true. You could do that. Right, right. You could have lots of unnecessary S's. But you don't consider that an ambiguous that, grammar. It would still, that would be. Okay. Yes, that would be technically, yes. This grammar is highly ambiguous, yes. I'm sorry, did you just say that would be ambiguous? Yeah, I mean, if you took S and made SS and SS and SS and then made those all empties, that would make a different tree. Yeah. You could do that with any language. Only this kind of ugly language. <laughs> I'm going to give you languages and I'll give you grammars in a minute that you can't do this with. There are definitely unambiguous grammars that generate the same string. Okay? I just didn't put one down. Oh, and wouldn't it be nice to know if a grammar is ambiguous, right? So you know what? This is this might be really cool. Instead of us having to actually look at every grammar, you guys go home, maybe it's not so easy, so maybe take a week and write a little program that takes a grammar and then checks whether it's ambiguous or not. Sure. Well, why don't you All right, so that's undecidable. You can't do that. It's impossible. It's a really nice thing to be able to do, and we can't do it. It's undecidable to take a grammar and decide is it ambiguous or not. Let's talk about that for a second because it's really important, and then we'll continue with this example. An arbitrary grammar. An arbitrary grammar. I give you an arbitrary grammar. You can certainly read it in and start you know, trying derivation trees. You all know about tree data structures. You try the trees. It's just the depth first, you know, uh, search through all these possible trees, and you can try it on every single string. So try it on one string, try all the derivations. Sooner or later, you're going to see whether you can derive that string in two different ways or not. So the truth is, your program will give the right answer if the answer is, if the answer is that it's ambiguous, it'll eventually find a string with two trees that are different. But if it's unambiguous, your program, just doing that simple simulation, will run forever. So it cannot tell us yes or no. 
It'll tell us no, it'll tell us ambiguous, that it's not unambiguous, that is. It'll tell us it is ambiguous, <laughs> if it is ambiguous. But it'll never tell us that it's unambiguous if it's unambiguous. It might run forever. So that is not an algorithm, that's simulation. So and if the, like the problem yesterday, the matching thing in the talk. <laughs> it's just like the thing in the talk, right. It's just like that undecidable thing that Mike Sipser talked about in the colloquium. All right, let's, I I that's all right. Yeah. Let's, let's finish this derivation up. Remember, this is the right side, and it's supposed to derive 0, 0, 1, 1. So we don't have too much more to go here. Um, all right, so who wants to do this? Blake, you want to finish the end here? This is the right side. It's supposed to... Excellent. Another 0, S1. And then what happens to this S? Epsilon. Good. So look at the side. 0, 0, epsilon, 1, 1. That's the right side. When you're all done with the derivation tree, all the capital letters become what are called internal nodes, and all the terminal nodes end up on leaves at the end of the tree. Let's do this side. We got three S's, left, middle, right. This one is supposed to be 0, S, 1, and this turns to empty. This one's supposed to be 0, S, 1, 0, S, 1, empty. And this one is 0, S, 1, empty. There it is. One neat thing that you might notice, what if you actually had this tree and you wanted to print out the string? It's basically the problem of printing out the leaves of a tree in this particular order. What is that order called? It's got a name. It's got a name. You do the left side. It's a binary tree, sir. It's it's yeah. Pre in or post? Pre order, in order, or post order. Left first. Then what? Then right, and then and then don't do the root. Yeah, so it's, you, you can do pre-order on an n or every tree. Just do all the children first and then the root, recursively. Anyway, I just, it's a side point. It's a connection. This course connects up to everything at some point, to compilers, to architecture, to algorithms. So there's a connection back how you get that string out. Doesn't matter. If you forget that, don't worry. There's a tree. All right, enough with this example. <laughs> Don't worry about anything. <laughs> You'll go out to dinner tonight with good company, and who cares about ambiguity? <laughs> That's our second grammar. Third grammar. Third grammar. Here we go. We're still sticking with only one non-terminal, but I will change this soon. This is a famous grammar. That's enough. The plus and the star are terminal symbols. The 0, 1, and 2 are terminal symbols. This generates strings over the alphabet plus star 0, 1, and 2 over a five-symbol alphabet. What kind of strings is it going to generate? Let's do some examples. Let's see this here. Show me the parse tree for this, or a parse tree for this. I'll start at S. There we go. Now we can. It goes up to nine. We'll make it a bigger alphabet. Oh, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> Show me how to do this. S plus S. Then what? What about the left now? Goes to 3. And the right goes to S times S. And this goes to 4. And this goes to 5. 
3 plus 4 times 5. 